Hey guys, it's your Fit for the Kingdom podcast host Matt here, and today I just wanted to do a bit of a longer video talking about uh, five arguments for the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. So the resurrection of Jesus from the dead is kind of the key, uh, the key thing that all of Christianity really revolves around. So before Jesus died, he made a lot of claims about himself. He claimed he was God. He claimed that he was the way, the truth, and the life, and that the, the only way to be saved was through him. And he also claimed that he was going to be put to death and three days later he would rise from the dead. And it's this resurrection of Jesus that really validates all that he was that he was saying. So if Jesus truly did rise from the dead, then we should believe everything that he said about himself. But if he didn't rise from the dead, then Christianity is, you know, it's based on a lie and we shouldn't believe it because it's um, at its very core, is, it's not true. Um, and Jesus was not who he said he was and was not God. So, so the resurrection is the kind of key thing for Christians that we should, um, you know, we should have solid reasons to believe that it's true. And so I'm going to present five arguments here, um, five arguments arguing for the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. So the first argument is that of the empty tomb. So we know Jesus was um, buried in this tomb and then three days later it was, this tomb was found empty by multiple witnesses. And this is attested to in different historical accounts, including those of the four Gospels. And this is significant because if the, the, the early Christians were claiming that Jesus rose from the dead, it would have been very easy to go to the tomb of Jesus and produce Jesus' body and it would instantly show that what they were claiming to be true was actually false. Um, but they weren't able to do this because the tomb was actually empty. Uh, so there have been different proposed theories by skeptics. Um, such as the stolen body hypothesis, uh, but this theory fails because it fails to account for the historical context. The tomb was guarded by Roman soldiers, um, specifically because the Jewish leaders knew that Jesus had claimed that he would rise from the dead, and so that asked the Romans to um, seal up the tomb and provide soldiers. And these Roman soldiers, they're skilled in their duty and would have faced severe consequences for any negligence, so it's highly unlikely that a group of untrained disciples could have successfully stolen the body unnoticed. So, in conclusion, the, the empty tomb is a powerful piece of evidence for the resurrection of Jesus and its discovery by multiple witnesses, um, as recorded in the Gospel, uh, supports the claim that Jesus did indeed rise from the dead. And it also paves the way for um, you know, the subsequent appearances of Jesus, which I'll talk about in, in the next couple of arguments, and the, then the transformation of the disciples' lives. Um, so yeah, the empty tomb is a good one to, is a good argument to bring up uh, and and. It's interesting to hear, you know, different different skeptical um, hypotheses on how the tomb could be empty, but the one that really does line up best is that Jesus truly did rise from the dead. The second argument is the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. So Jesus appeared after his resurrection to multiple people. Um, so historically, we've got accounts of, you know, him appearing to his disciples, and then also it's up to 500 people um, who have who claimed that they saw Jesus risen from the dead. Um, and they didn't just, uh, they weren't just isolated cases, but they took uh, place over a period of time in that 40 days that he was on earth before um, he ascended back to heaven. And they involved multiple different groups of people as well. It wasn't just the same group. And, and we can also see the profound effect that this, these sightings had on those who saw him. So the disciples before the resurrection, they were fearful and disheartened, hiding in, in fear of their lives. And then afterwards, they were they were transformed and became kind of you know bold proclaimers of the gospel and of Jesus' resurrection. So some skeptics have said you know that there was some sort of mass hallucinations or grief-induced visions that can explain the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. Uh, however, these theories fail to account for multiple appearances to different individuals and groups, as well as the you know the physical interactions. And um, conversations described in the accounts, such as you know Jesus eating fish, um, and you know commanding his disciples to to you know touch his wounds to see that he truly was uh, resurrected. Um, so ultimately, these appearances are another kind of compelling piece of evidence for the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. The third argument for the resurrection of Jesus from the dead is the absolute transformation of the disciples. So you know after the crucifixion. Jesus, the disciples, they're devastated, um, they're fearful, they're uncertain about the future, but then something remarkable happened to them um, that changed everything. And they underwent, you know, this radical transformation 
that can't really easily be explained away by any um, you know natural or psychological factors. So we can we can look at some specific examples. For example, uh, Saint Peter, he denied Jesus three times right before the crucifixion, and then was fearful and everything right after it. But then later, after claiming to have seen the risen Lord, he became a powerful preacher and you know fearlessly proclaimed the message of Christ. Um, and we see the same thing with the other um, of the apostles as well. And it's interesting because 11 out of these 12 apostles ended up being brutally murdered for this, um, proclaiming the resurrected Christ and his teachings. And I feel it would be next to impossible for them to give their lives in this, you know, this horrific way for something that they knew to be a lie anyway. We've also got to consider the historical context of, the tra of this transformation of the disciples. So the disciples were Jews who adhered to you know, the strict monotheistic belief um, system and the idea of a crucified Messiah would have been you know, inconceivable to them. Yet their conviction in the resurrection compelled them to you know, pro boldly proclaim Jesus as the risen Lord. Uh, and so you know, just looking at those factors, it's another really very strong argument for the, the idea that Jesus really did rise from the dead. The fourth argument for the resurrection of Jesus is the growth and spread of the early Christian church, which, um, despite facing intense persecution, began to spread rapidly through the Jewish world and then the Roman Empire, uh, and was based on in the fact that they that their message preached that Jesus had risen from the dead, and it was the the the, the foundation of their teachings and the driving force behind their mission, and the growth and spread of Christianity so quickly in the first century. Um, really suggests that early believers genuinely believed in the resurrection and were willing to endure hardships and even give their lives for the faith. A great example of this is Paul the Apostle who was initially persecuting Christians but then after an encounter with the risen Lord completely changed his whole approach, turned his life around and joined the Christians and was became one of the uh, biggest early Christian teachers who was responsible for converting many people to uh, to the, the Christian message and way of life. Um, so, and, and, we, and we see this growth through, you know, intense persecution from, from the Romans and from the Jews and from a lot of people who didn't like this message of Jesus um, at all. And, and uh, But still Christianity really managed to spread. So skeptics have proposed alternative theories to explain the growth of Christianity, such as different socio-political factors uh, or the influence of charismatic leaders, but these theories really fail to account for the devotion and steadfastness of the early Christians who faced persecution, martyrdom, um, and loss of social status and privilege for their beliefs. Like it wasn't, you didn't get anything uh, good in the eyes of the world from becoming a Christian. And so this rapid growth of the Christian movement in the face of um, all this, this hardship and persecution is another, uh, I think really strong point that points to the evidence that they definitely believed in the, the resurrection of Christ. The fifth argument for the resurrection of Jesus is the lack of any um, plausible alternative explanations for for all the, the various things that we've discussed. And it's significant because it really strengthens the case for the resurrection as the most reasonable and plausible explanation of historical data. And when you know, critically, critically examining the proposed alternatives, they, you know, they falter, they fall short and explain things like the empty tomb, the post-resurrection appearances, and the transformation of the disciples. Um, and we've seen this uh, as, we've, as we've been going through this video. Another proposed theory is that Jesus just merely swooned or fainted on the cross and then was later revived in the tomb. Uh, but this explanation disregards the brutality of the crucifixion and the expertise of the Romans um, in executing crucifixions. <laughs> this is what they were, they were most good at. They were, they were famous for being good at cruci crucifying people. And it's also, also the testimony of witnesses, many of them, who saw Jesus die on the cross and then buried him. Uh, the resurrection hypothesis, on the other hand, it, it offers a, a coherent and comprehensive explanation of all available evidence. And it accounts for the empty tomb the multiple post-resurrection appearances, the transformation of the disciples, and the subsequent growth of the early Christian movement. And so when we weigh the evidence and evaluate the different explanations, the resurrection emerges as the most plausible and reasonable and compelling explanation. And the lack of other plausible explanations really solidifies this even further, which um, you know really points towards the resurrection as being a historically valid event. And it challenges us to really think about 
um, you know, the implications that this could have. And you know, if it's true, then Christianity is true. So hopefully these arguments have been helpful in pointing some, to some really good historical uh, data and evidence for why the resurrection is reasonable and we should believe in it. Thanks.